back to my channel where we're about that breaking cycles life. It's another Thursday. We kind of have like a holiday this, these two days. It's Dragon Ball Festival here in China. So, yeah. No exams these two days. Aren't I happy? And then we have, uh, um, I have three left. Bom, bom, bom. 11 subjects this semester, guys. But, you know, we, God has brought me this far. He'll take me to the end. Okay. So, we have a long chapter. Chapter 21 of Genesis. And let's get right into it. So, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham, a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God has commanded. Now Abraham was one hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me she also said who would have said to abram that sarah would nurse children for i have borne him a son in his old age so the child grew and was weaned and abram made a great feast on the same day that isaac was weaned and sarah saw the son of hagar the egyptian whom she had borne to abraham scoffing therefore she said to abram cast out this bondwoman and her son for the son of this born woman shall not be here with my with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your born woman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice, for in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the born woman because he is your seed. So Abram rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to the boy to Hagar and gave, and gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba and the water in the skin was used up and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow, a bow shot. For she said to herself, let, not, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite to him and lifted her, her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of, the, the angel of God called to, Ag to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, Wait, it ails. What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise. Lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water, and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore, now therefore swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offspring or with my posterity, but that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. Then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. So Abram took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. And Abram set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech said, Then Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, You will take these seven new lambs from my hand, that they may be my witness, and that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. 
Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Pichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called the name of the Lord. And there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. Okay, so um, the the two main lessons, because the third part of this chapter is basically um, stating um, a new covenant made between Abraham and Abimelech. Okay, so that is going to be a continuation. So basically, the two main lessons: they can. I just said you can. Oh my gosh, that's Chinese for look. It's like guys. Um, remember, since we started the story of Abraham or of Noah or of God of of creation on a whole, what God said will come to pass, and here it is clearly evident in chapter twenty one that God, at His appointed time, made the promise come to pass right he in spite of everything sarah did in spite of the fact that abraham had another child ishmael in spite of all that happened that was there to basically hinder the plan of god at the time that it was supposed to happen it happened nothing could stop the plan of god so if God has a promise for you, just like what he did with Abraham and Sarah, even in their old age, if God, there's two things can take from that. Let's split that. Let's do it two. Let's take it from the literal perspective. If you're seeking a child, listen. <laughs> when it comes to God, having faith, is the key thing in, in, in regards to Christianity, in regards to your relationship with God, having faith, because it's faith that is the basis of Christianity, to be honest, because we are not able to see it, and we're just using the testimony of others in regards to what we believe, and of course, if you have experienced it for yourself in terms of um the life that you have lived and know that things wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for God, then you know that there is a God and that's faith. That's faith. That's faith being tested and tried. Right? If you have faith that, you know, maybe your desire is to have a child just like Sarah or God came to you and said, yes, you have a child. Believe it. The word spoken by God will not return to him void. That's one of my favorite sayings in the Bible. Because if you're someone like me that God makes a lot of promises to, <laughs> and I mean a lot, okay, like a lot of aspects in my life, um, he has spoken to me about in many different forms, dreams, just talking to me. Med school wasn't a dream. Um, if uh, he has spoken to you and uh, he said this will happen, he is going to let it happen, even if it comes in chapter 21, when we started this whole thing from like, what, chapter 14? With Abraham. Actually, chapter 12, right? From chapter 12. <laughs> right? That, that's a lot of years. You know, a lot of things that happened during those years as well. So, if God, if God has spoken to you about something, believe it. Especially if it's regarding um, a child. Guys, if you're someone who's desiring, if you're a couple or just a lady that's desiring to have a child, 
bring it to God. And if it's his will, he will let it happen at the right time. Regardless of what science says, regardless of what your body says, God, if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. Okay? And number two, if it's any other promise, like me and med school, eh, two years. <laughs> ah, just one word spoken. I thought that was crazy then, you know, but mm, it's like, when it finally happens, you're like, whoa. When chapter 21 comes, you know, you're like, whoa. Just keep holding on. As hard as it is, you're going to feel crazy. You're going to have some mental, mentally draining moments. But if you keep holding on, to be honest, at one point, it's just going to happen. And when it does happen, you're going to be like, finally you know or thank god and and you'll be like okay i understand why it never happened this time at this time at this time okay and the next part if you if you're if you feel rejected by family or anyone just as well you know hey god was sent away well she kind of she kind of scoffed at sarah sarah anyway if you feel if you are feeling that you're alone or you know things just look as if hey, there's nothing to eat everything looks dry best believe it's in those moments that you see god provide <laughs> that kind of rhymes yeah never give up on what god is doing in your life you know and never think that and never think that um, you will not be taken care of. God will always provide for you. And uh, as I said, the last part is just another covenant with Abimelech. So th those are really the lessons that I got from this chapter. If you see anything else, please do not hesitate to comment below. And uh, guys... Let's hold on to God's promises. That's the main lesson, I think, from this entire story. If God has spoken a word to you, hold on to it. Because his word will not return to it void. Regardless of how many things we try to do to stop it. Okay? So, yeah, that's it. I'll see you on Sunday for Sunday Song Spotlight. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's encouragement and I hope you guys are ready for the day ahead. Now do me a favor and press that like button and subscribe button if you are new so that we can get more of this positive Christian content out into the world, okay? And I'll link my daily devotional playlist right here and my Let's Talk playlist if you want to tackle some social issues, okay? So have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.